open the meeting at 6.02. I was voted to be the chairman, but in the meantime, we came up with a better plan where I can still be the chair, and I'm going to make a motion that Chris actually be the one to run the meetings. I'll second that motion. All in favor? You don't get a say. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd be a little weird for me to go. Uh, yeah, we checked with Steve Fry out there. He did the research. He said that is, I can be, Diana can continue to be chair, and Diana represents the select board. Um, and I can just be presiding officer. And it doesn't sound like there's any problem with that. Um, so, Diana called the meeting needed to order. Um, are there any uh, ad amendments or adjustments to the agenda? Mm, I, just, I don't know if I would call this an adjustment, but something we need to discuss. Our next meeting is going to be on April 8th, the uh, eclipse date. Should we change it or just, it'll yeah, be all over by that. then. I, uh, oh, I was going to go do something. Yeah, let's, let's, let's change it. Change it to the next day, the Tuesday? Sure, the any day is good for me. Okay. So I don't think that requires a motion. That just requires us yeah. warning the meeting for the day right. okay. uh, following. I have, I have an adjustment also. I just wanted to um, briefly talk about um, a $4,000 pot of money that the town has designated for, for um, energy projects. And um, there's a, a agreement that needs to be signed. There's no match, et cetera. Um, but I would, and it doesn't have to be dealt with tonight, but I wanted to just make sure that you knew about it and, um, and maybe we could have it on. I know the agenda is pretty full tonight, but. Do you want to talk about that right after the recovery officer's report? Sure. All right. Any other amendments or adjustments to the agenda? Hearing none, we'll move on to approving bills and payroll orders. You're going to have to give me the, I don't remember how to do that. We were working just, on it. Just, oh, that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I just put in the minutes that we approved the bills. Yeah. We will. We not right this All right, minute. so we'll do that at, towards we'll the end of the meeting. Yeah. yeah. And then the next item is to approve the minutes from the March 11th meeting. I uh, move that we approve those minutes. I'll second that. Any discussion? All those in favor of approving the minutes from March 11th, please say aye. Aye. Hearing no dissenting votes, we will approve it by unanimous consent. And then the next item is public comment. And I think that um, we had a quick discussion among the board that um, public comment should be directed toward the board. Um, and, and, and the conversation, if there's a conversation, would be between uh, the members of the audience and the board. Um, the board can make a really simple, you know, answer really simple questions. But often we're here just to listen. And it might take us a minute. I think we all agree that it sometimes the, the first thing that comes out of your mouth is not necessarily the smartest thing to come out of your mouth in a response. And so sometimes it makes sense to like take a minute to really think about something before we respond to the public. So that going forward, I think, is going to be um, the best way to uh, do public comment. So there are members of the public here. Um, if you would like to say something, please raise your hand, state your name, and then uh, go ahead. Yes, sir. John Gordon, emergency, well, former emergency management director until reappointed, I guess. Um, I hear that, you there. That means you're still there until <laughs> still there. Until, uh, so I have um, some, there's a grant, um, Flood Resilience Communities Fund grant that we, that there's uh, entities interested in applying for from the state. Um, maybe, well, it's actually passed through. But in any case, um, the property owner in question is uh, Jake Mishadik, the property across uh, the road there. Um, it's uh, basically the process would be, I would put together the application. You folks would sign the thing saying you want to go forward with this. Um, he signs it saying he wants to do it. Um, if everything gets approved, 
state funnels down the money and we use that to buy the property out, demolish it, or turn it to green space. That's the, the thumbnail sketch of it. So um, I have other details and of course it would be a, a process. But if there's interest in doing that, um, I'll need to get a signature on the, on the agreement document from the board. Yes, Diana? Um, no cost to the town? No cost to the town. And who would be in charge of getting the job done? Unfortunately, that would probably be me. But, yeah. That would be the, the main go for mm -hmm. to try to get the job done. Thank you. You'd be, you'd be the quick of the work, sir, for lack of a better term. Yeah, you yeah. say so. Yeah. yeah. Any questions? I just want to share with everyone um, that uh, the meeting on Wednesday uh, with uh, Ben Matthew to look at the stream is also part of that um, Flood Resiliency Communities Fund, uh, our, a grant for that. Um, so we'll have a couple of them. And it works. So I have some of the paperwork work here. I could also forward the agreement electronically, whichever you would rather. I do have a signed one from the property owner, but he didn't actually complete the thing before he signed it, but he certainly is interested. If you were to sign one, I would route it back to him for signature. This wouldn't complete the application because I still have to go and gather a whole bunch of other junk, mm -hmm. um, but it would basically start the application. So. Would you, are you asking us to sign it now, or? Um, if you would want to, or I can uh, field more questions, or. I'd love to just be able to read through it before. Is it just sure. a couple pages, or is it pretty long? Well, there's a, this is an outline of the budget, estimated budget. Okay. This is the actual front page on the uh, agreement. And then there's, uh, this is a partial very partial of the part of the application and then meet the <coughs> property owner or have a number of other another document that he would have to complete. So you're welcome to these hard copies? Thank you. Yeah. Is this time again. sensitive? Like, uh, is, is, um, is there I think any reason they, we couldn't think, sign it by the next meeting? Or I think that it would be good if we, if it's possible to get the one thing signed by um, by Friday, that one, it would, be, it would be good, but that doesn't, like I said, that doesn't complete the process. So if you, if we, um, like this one here, actually, this one here is is one that would be kind of necessary to finalize the application. So I would recommend if you have interest in pursuing, sign the one, mm -hmm. and then we get everything together and then sign the last one because the last one um, as the authorized agent for the, for the actual application um, that would sort of well it wouldn't be complete until everything's in mm -hmm. so how did you come up with a budget i didn't um no. brian mcwalter from the state oh. came up with the budget oh, and nice. sent it along in the merry way and then i at this point i don't have any reason to doubt it, but if we come up with any reason to doubt it, then we would have to adjust the budget and the application, the main form of the application. Mm -hmm. So if you need this by Friday, um, we're going to have to stay after and do these anyway. Mm -hmm. Can we just all maybe take a look and... Um, and I can send it to you electronically if you rather... Give you know, us a little time to look at it. Yeah, it's all right. Yep. That'd be great. Okay. So if you want to hang on to the hard copies, this is the same as that, just has ink on it. And some of this, Thank there you. has a slight amount of detail on there that pertains to this project, but this isn't the actual working one because there's a lot more information, especially in the history of that property flooding multiple times in the last, hmm. since 14. So that's as far back as I've got since from Chris Wright. So. Thank you, John. Yep. Other public comment? All right, hearing none, we'll move on to um, town clerk's report. Today I spent the day going into the, ele the um, elections program and loading in everybody that participated in the primary election. That's something that Secretary of State needed. 
So that's what I did my day today doing. <laughs> Thanks for doing it. And, and um, research has been slow, so I've got the recording caught up for now. We'll see how long it stays low. Because usually it's low for a couple, three days, and then boom, we're off and running again. And when you say research, you mean folks coming in to yes. research properties or yep. lawyers? Or yeah, like if you okay. wanted to sell your property yep. to me, you would have a researcher come in. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. And Gillespie stopped by and checked out our oil tank t today, and he said that's in all good condition. Did you tell him not to fill it, or did they fill it? I did not <laughs> hear it going in, but I was okay. down in the basement, yeah. okay. and I would have heard it down yeah. there. And I, I didn't mean, we, hear might, you know, we haven't decided anything yet, but right. it would be good if they didn't fill it, if they didn't have to, just right. in case we change something. <laughs> I don't think this is on the agenda later, but did um, Lloyd's, was Lloyd's ever, did they arrive to? They didn't come back a second time. They did Will not. was going to come back tomorrow. Did you get hold of him today? He says he's going to drop off something to you tomorrow and tell you something. And I explained why we couldn't make time to sit through his sales pitch. Mm -hmm. We just wanted a number and a proposal. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So he's going to. I just assumed that you guys didn't want to take an afternoon off. It would be hard. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. And I think that's about all I have. When you do your appointments, we got one here from <coughs> Solid Waste Management mm -hmm. also. Okay. I think that's all I've got. Thank you, Rob. Then mm -hmm. the town treasurer's report. Yep. Financial statements, your balance sheet. you to do from the, for the last two weeks of cash receipts we took in fourteen hundred dollars and thirty cents delinquent taxes three hundred and forty dollars uh, traffic fines a hundred and one dollars and fifty cents payroll the last two weeks eight thousand two hundred thirty seven dollars and ninety six cents accounts payable hundred and thirty three thousand seven hundred ninety eight dollars and fifteen cents today I transferred a hundred and thirty five thousand Brandy, I apologize because I'm not I'm new at this. Yep. But is so there, first, yep. The first page it's is what I should. Sheet. Okay. Is that where when you're running through that list of? Uh, no. Okay. No. I compile. Got it. My goodies over the last two weeks of income and. All right. Outgoing and all that good stuff. Um, but, yeah, I mean, so. All of our accounts are combined into one for the fund balancing. Your last sheet will tell you how much money each fund has in it. Um, the HER fund is at zero today. Um, and you'll see the invoice of the $91,000 for the parts for the new, the new Freightliner. Um, so I took what was left of the HER um, and then the rest came out of the highway, um, of course, yeah. So is that part of the original amount that we had approved? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's We just the, didn't have to pay for it all at once? body and the plow and the wing and all yeah. that. <coughs> well, there's two different vendors. You bought the truck oh. from Charlie Boys, Boys. Mm -hmm. and you're buying the truck the parts from oh. Civic. Viking. Yeah. Viking. Yeah. So until we get a deposit from Swenson's, um, and yeah, we've already spent the 90000 that was transferred over for more equipment, so yeah. But we did, you guys did as a board, justify the Swenson as of July 1, so more will go into that, so that's good. Could you tell me what the Swenson ad is? Swenson gives us every quarter a percentage um, 6.5 cents per cubic, cubic foot of granite. Usable. Bring okay. out. Usable. Yeah. What yeah. they consider usable. Um, so we have it right now. 55% goes into the HERF, 35% goes into the highway, and the remainder goes into the paving, which we don't have many roads that are paved. Um, and that cushion from the due to be from, we're up to, for the, in the paving, 
$25,711.79. So as of July 1, I recommended we don't put any more in that cushion and start putting it into the herb um, since it's, yeah. So it's not that many roads to pave. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we can usually get grants for paving. Mm -hmm. so. Um, other goodies, I completed my VLCT payroll audit. Um, I haven't heard back. <coughs> other goodies. Um, <coughs> pie breakfast was great. Um, I'll be doing that deposit tomorrow. How much did they make? Um, there's a $3,000 deposit I have to make for tomorrow. Oh. Uh, count was two hundred and one ninety six. I think she said. Mm -hmm. I'd heard over two hundred. She said. Did you there? But anyways, that was a good turnout. Yeah. Cool. Questions for me. So April one in that the ARPA. Um, anticipating for it to be zero. So this will be my last time going into the system logging in and giving them the yeah. the remainder of what's left. So again going back to due to do from the last page, there is six thousand ninety five dollars and eighty seven cents left in the ARPA. So I'd like to make a motion that we put that money towards uh, uh, what is it the uh, town building maintenance Fund. We've got sixteen thousand dollars in there now. And if we put that six thousand dollars in, it might be enough to replace the north side of the roof on the town hall. The uh, just FYI, Chris, we did put in for some money for the town hall upgrades in ARPA, and it didn't get approved. Just so like that kind of project wasn't. Hmm? That no, it was the what? board. The select board decided to put the money towards the grader instead. Got it. So. Okay. So it still needs to be done, and hopefully there might be more grant funds available other places to uh, do some more upgrades on the town hall so we can have a more usable space so we don't have to come in here and move the tables every time. <laughs> I'm getting better at it, though. Do you need any? Can you get a chance to look at the list of um, the other requests for the ARPA money? It was a that I sent you the other day. I probably looked at it. But, uh, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, I would second your motion. I don't know if you have. Well, we can still you can take we can still discuss it after you second it because if okay. you had some other ideas. I didn't. I looked at the list. I thought mm -hmm. of all the things on the list, the roof seemed like a good yeah. use of money. Really, would make sense to open it up again. And there, there's like proof, like uh, certain types of projects that that money can go to. Yeah, so this falls within that category. Well, definitely yes. Although once the government started giving out that money, they realized that oh, yikes, it's, it's going to be a whole lot of trouble to keep track of. So they backtracked on their original list of how things had to be done and if you, and now if you're making less getting less than a million dollars you can basically do what you want. I mean it should be spent on town mm -hmm. services. Burlington is the only place in Vermont that really had to go through the other proof of how they're spending it. But, I mean we still have to show that we've spent it. Oh yeah. And, I but, if, but if we can report get back this the off the list right now Branding will only have one more reporting to do for this current uh, quarter, and then she'll be happy with that. Any more discussion? All those in favor of moving the remaining ARPA funds, $6,095.87, to the Town Building Maintenance Fund, um, please add. Aye. 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 There are no nays. Motion passes. Anything else from our town treasurer? Um, dog licenses are due, so I'm really scared what tomorrow is going to look like since it's the last <laughs> Tuesday of the month, Ooh. and we only have 40. It's under 50. Under 50 dogs. No registered. kidding. And we have like, almost 300 a month. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, other than that. Right. Fire department update. A little bit update with FEMA stuff. Uh, we, I, I think our parking lot cleanup project stuff is complete, although I haven't seen the final paperwork yet. I signed some paperwork. Um, the building stuff is partially complete, and the calls, I believe, are complete. So I don't know what that means yet, but we haven't seen any money, as you have not either, right? Um, I don't know when we'll ever see any funds for all that stuff. Um, I guess we can dovetail into the existing station. I'm, I'm here with the same request that John's here with, too. I wanted to hold our place open. Uh, we're on kind of a, I don't even want to call it parallel paths anymore. It's kind of three paths. We've on dealing with the old building, which everyone we've discussed here. The fact that it's still flooding and we got to get ourselves completely out of there, it looks like. So we we initially uh, put in our interest for a flood mitigation buyout, just like the house right across the street because we keep flooding. And so I have an application, uh, same paperwork I'd like to sign to say the town would support that if we continue to move through it. Again, at this stage, it's not committing to anything. It's just simply saying, yeah, if we, if we go down that road, uh, we would continue to, the town would support it because the town ends up being the, you can correct me if I'm wrong, the, the person that has to apply and the, town, the state provides the money to the town and then does the whole project so yeah. unless unless he specified differently but I don't have you don't know of anyone interested in that but it's in the application the default is that the town would be the owner sorry yeah yeah so so we're on because what I've got to do is we've got to turn we either got to get enough money to fix that building where it is and I'm going to get to the next thing that happened because nothing's been simple with this whole process so it just continues to get more complicated so we've got to t make it into enough money to either fully repair that building uh, through this FEMA process. We're at the state where uh, they're determining whether we're more than 50% damaged, which the architect said it was about six weeks ago. FEMA didn't like the language, so they were supposed to send me corrected language that made FEMA happy, but still, so I had an interaction with FEMA last week and they were supposed to have bi-weekly meetings, which nobody has set up yet. Mm -hmm. Skips over there, smirking away. Um, <laughs> so, so that's another path that we're on um, to try to, to get the funds to, to do. Because again, always in our design of the new place, we've needed to keep about a couple thousand more square footage somewhere else. So that's still in play uh, with FEMA. Because ultimately, we could end up rebuilding there or across the street or somewhere else if they eventually say yeah it's more than 50 percent damage design a new building we'll fund that and then you could take it and apply for an alternative so there's like three more steps to get to where we might find out what we want to know um, mm. so the advice from all the powers that be was keep all your channels flowing as john i think correctly said yes that we talked to keep throwing stuff against the wall until something sticks so I would ask that we could sign that paper. Um, one of the things I think for both parties is I, I think I emailed you when I sent that I, the paperwork that I got from the state and to keep us as a priority project we got to get the application in by the 29th which is Friday. Oh. So I think that would apply for the neighbors uh, project. Yeah that's... So... I don't know what that means but that's what the paperwork says. Is that something you want us to sign by, the, by then? I, if you would. And you have something? I do. Oh, okay. It's the same thing you just... It's the same thing. It's simply just yeah. saying uh, the application itself would not be complete. We would submit what we have just to keep our place open. Mm -hmm. This is simply saying, from what I can understand, and I've got two copies here that we could sign, is that uh, we would, you would be willing to do this if, the, if that's the mm -hmm. avenue that ends up coming through. I don't even know for either property if you'll end up getting funded. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I just don't. So that's that's what I'm asking, and then we'll get on to the next piece of this. So if, we, if that gets signed, it just expresses interest in moving forward with a potential buyout of that Correct. property. But in the event that you get full FEMA funding, because it's more than 50 percent, we could opt not to do it. You could opt, still opt not Correct. to do that. And so presumably, John, with your project too, that it would be the same. That if that's it, not that. I don't know that there's, see, with, with his project, there's, it's like, it may go this way, may go that way, may go the other way, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's kind of like whichever one actually gets the big stamp of approval, 
you know, and if, if more than one happens then you pick the better one. Mm -hmm. I don't know of any other Avenue. avenues. Yeah, the for, house, there's not any, there's no yeah. FEMA money, yeah. there's no it's, other it's avenues. Basically just the... Signing this wouldn't preclude you from a no. full FEMA? No. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And it may be when they consider the application, I'm just speculating, but it could be that, especially with the fire department, they could be saying, well, you've got other things going on and then we're not going to fund that one. Because, it may not get funded anyway. Because... Mm -hmm. um, the, there's poss other possibilities, but nothing, nothing gets moved. Like even if we put our app, all the applications in and say we want to do this, you know, if the state doesn't say approved, mm -hmm. then nothing happens in terms of this, the town moving forward to do the mm -hmm. purchasing and all that jazz. Mm -hmm. So, you got any more news to share with your public? I do. Do you want to address this, or what do you? Oh, you, you want to I, I, you're done. And I can. Yep. Yeah. Cool. So we'll okay. look at that after the meeting yep. also. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, just I wanted to do the time thing because I just like to keep our place held yeah. open. And I got, so if you do end up signing it, there's two copies if you'd like one back. Okay. You can uh, leave it down at the office. Oh, uh, okay. I apologize for the timing. I meant to come last meeting, but then I got sick. So. Yeah. And I got sick last week too, or I would have had it last time too. But <laughs> the uh, norovirus came to visit my house for oh, a week. Oh, dear. <clears throat> yeah. So I'm a little bit behind. So I, I got to look at this. And, oh, dude, that's why this. That's why this. No, I'm good now. You just didn't want to be hanging around with me last week on Monday night. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that would be great. Thank you. It essentially keeps our place open and keeps options. That, yeah, it seems like every time I get one of my four or five balls that I'm trying to keep floating, they just hand me another one to, mm -hmm. to float. So that takes care of that. The other thing that happened is we I had applied for a an earmark through Senator Sanders' office, I want to say last March or April, filled out their short application and sent it in. Well, to make a long story short, it made its way through the whole process and I got a letter from uh, Haley Perro two weeks ago saying that we had been funded to $1,125,000. So and then I spoke Yay. with Senator Sanders on Friday, a week ago, a week ago Friday, it wasn't this past yeah. Friday, and uh, we discussed the project and so and I kind of pre-warned people at town meeting about we're too far down the process to have it affect phase one of this project. But what it does do is give us funding for, we've kind of masked it and looked at it, there's probably room to replicate the square footage of this building on the other side of the street attached to our new building, which I think was ideal for everybody, one meter, one heating system, one everything. So this money has to come through USDA uh, Rural Development Community Facilities. So I did have a conversation a month or so ago with, with uh, Misty, who's the director for the Northeast Region, and um, kind of proposed what we were thinking about. And she said, yeah, that would, that would probably fly, but it would have to be its own project. So what we would do is this project, our current building project, is under contract to start in May, I'm assuming around the first of the month, mm -hmm. um, and be completed in November. And then we would create a second project meeting all the federal requirements. There's federal bidding requirements, and I'd have to do a uh, level one environmental study mm -hmm. uh, to continue on and then fill out the whatever <coughs> bazillion pages of, I'm assuming they have a long ap application. So. so, Paul, is this other project the addition to the new fire station that would incorporate the space of the old that's what we're That's what we're contemplating. That's what I'm, okay. I'm talking. I'm talking about what we'd like to do. Um, I've got, I haven't heard from USDA when I spoke with Senator Sanders, he said it may be several months before that money becomes available and we can actually start applying. So uh, all I did was spend some time with the civil engineer to, to just do what, you know, calling a massing, can this fit here, which required digging out a whole bunch more dirt, which is fine. And what we would do in this phase is just not do anything that would preclude us from doing that, like locating a tank there. I'd probably omit the windows on the south side of the building, change the retaining wall design a little bit and probably run uh, drain and sewer lines through the other building to have available. That's all we do at this point. Mm -hmm. And then we'd have to go through the whole, create the whole project, get an architect. I've already got all, we've got a team already, the same team. The only thing we'd have to rebid for during is, is the contractor uh, for n that next project, but we'd be a ways out. I, I, I would imagine it's a one to two year project. One year's probably really optimistic, two years probably more realistic. So in the interim, we just move our stuff in there. Yeah. So does that mean the one million, one point one million dollars is not going to 
affect what the taxpayers have to pay every year? So, well, we'd still be paying the loan on part one of this building because mm -hmm. I can't affect that. Like they won't fund that piece because it's already funded, it's already permitted, it's already out to oh, contract. Geez. Yeah, right. Supplement but not supplant they is the term they like supplant. to use. So even if we were to cancel the project and try to redo it all, they wouldn't give us the money because yeah. they said you have funding, it's all planned, you're supplanting. That's a good word. And uh, <laughs> but we've always had the need to fix the million whole station. Extension. Yeah, so to a million dollar, three million the only, dollar building the, with it. Why these other the other pieces of turning that old station into cash somehow is important is there's matching funds that we have to come up with. And I'm not exactly sure what our match is and I don't know the total cost whether we end up using all that money so I don't want to throw numbers out because I just haven't got enough information at this point in time but that's why it's important that we turn it into cash somehow whether you sell it whether they tear it down and mitigate it whether they or, or any piece of the three things right that's kind of what we're trying to do is it going to be two buildings or is it definitely going to be an addition to your new building well, my hope is that it would be added right on to. Um, again, I, I don't know because I, I need to address all of these questions to USDA, what they will do, so, or whether they're going to just want me to rebuild it down here. I don't know. I mean, I, when I bounced the idea off her, she was like, yeah, it would work. And I'm like, okay, but you know the devil's always in the detail with these things. So I'm hoping in seven or eight months we'd have a lot more detail than I have now. Mm -hmm. So it's good, but it's also another hill to climb. Mm -hmm. Nice work. But it does go, I think it would go a long way of getting us out of this problem area that we have in the middle of the village and I think ultimately for the town and the fire department it would be better to get under one roof and this mm -hmm. really provides, this kind of the conversation I had with the senator was it really provides that that opportunity. Mm -hmm. did, did I remember saying if, if, in the, if in fact that gets bought out by FEMA yeah. that would be turned to, that that spot would be turned over to the town but it would be it would have to be green space. It would have to be green space because yeah. you can't build on Yeah, and we're so several steps. steps. I mean, yeah. you could have an option of where we get money from FEMA, they give us an alternative project, and then we either sell the building or give it to the town. There's yeah. a whole bunch of things that could happen. Yeah. We've got to just see what the funding, where the funding comes from. There's a whole, I hope, hope something comes through. We've got enough anvils mm -hmm. in the fire, irons in the fire, I guess they say. Would somebody please shut that door? Is it breezy? Thank you. It's kind of cold. <laughs> so it's good, and it just means a lot more work. So, um, thank you. I guess stay tuned. Yeah. I thought it was really good news, but then it gave me a lot of heartburn because I was like, "Great, what does more this work. mean?" Yeah. And I did. We did. I had Norman call. We had a long conversation about just stopping the whole project, but mm -hmm. Misty figured that would take about a, it would take about two years to get it restarted again. Okay. And we're just in dire straits. And then she said we probably wouldn't fund it because it's supplanting. Mm -hmm. Because it's like saying I got the cash, I'm going to get rid of the cash. Like, they just won't find yeah, that. We haven't paid for it I, yet. I, you know. <laughs> this is federal things. These are the people that are going to build us a 1.3 million dollar temporary building, like they did in Cabot, and then yeah. they've been told in Cabot they got to move out in 18 months, and they can use it for something else, but not a fire station. So, mm. yeah. So I haven't been dealing with this type of thing professionally, but I've been dealing with feds and federal grants professionally and the whole supplement but not supplant, um, sometimes it basically it can make the money unusable um, because you find yourself in a position where you can't do the work to, um, to not supplant and but if you if you give them a hint that you're supplanting your own funds then they pull up stakes and run. That's been my experience with, with feds and grants in my professional life, which is a very unrelated arena, but the whole supplement but not supplant thing is I've bumped into that a number of different places with federal grants. They are not interested in you. If you started some project, they're not interested in paying for it. Yes, we do have an opportunity to fund a piece of this project that had been had not yet been funded. We had always intended to fix the old building, probably through raised funds, but now we have an opportunity to actually do something a whole lot better, in a whole lot better spot, I think. So, and we did win the lottery. I mean, yeah. it was not. A guy called me. He goes, "How did you guys win?" I'm like, "I never thought we would win." <laughs> Even when I knew it was in the budget, I said, "We're still not going to win." And then when I got that letter, I was like. 
I was thinking, oh, that's going to be such a relief for Paul, but I guess no, it just means more work because I'm going to have to. Once I know the oh. the rules that I got to work under, then I've got to plan a whole project, and we'll have to see what we have for because again, I don't know what pieces that you got to pay for an architect to do a a design and opinion of probable cost, and you've got to do this. The, the site study will be about ten thousand um, dollars. The architect mm -hmm. is going to be around ten thousand dollars. You see what I'm saying? So it's it's you're going to have to spend money to get where you need to go. So it's not going to be simple. But I don't want to start anything because I don't want to screw it up before we start. So I'm going to wait till we hear something from USDA, and then we'll proceed. And I will keep you informed of what's happening. Okay. Worries. Anything else? I think that's it. The, the, we, the drug problem update has been quieter for the last couple of weeks. I shouldn't use that word, but it's uh, not yeah, a word. It's ten. It kind of. <laughs> so we're in the we're in the low fire. So maybe it's, maybe it's too cold. I just got to steal Robin if you can notarize something for James O'Reilly not to disturb. Unless you got any more questions for me. I got nothing. All right. Appreciate it. And if that you can just let me know because I'd just like to yeah. get this stuff to John by. So you can get it in by Friday. I don't know how important that is, but don't know whether it says something about doing it by Friday. For sure. All right. Thank you all for your time. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Really appreciate all your work. <clears throat> that works. Alfie, you wrote commissioner's report. Uh, well, we just go over another snowstorm. Another month season coming up. Another month season coming up. Yeah. Month season coming up. yeah. Um, we've been hauling gravel. We've hauled gravel today. And we'll do it again this tomorrow. One stockpile. It's yeah. uh, and then we can put it out on the roads as yours. we need it. Well, uh, um, trucks are working oh, just fine. Everything seems to be holding up. Um, my new employee is scheduled to start tomorrow, nice. first day. Um, so the sand contract. I understand we have one. Yeah. I think that comes down a little bit further, doesn't it? In the no. No. Great. It is. Yeah. 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 Oh, the sand screen. We got select board business. The sand screen. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We'll sign that at the. Uh, okay. Yep. Um, so I have a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. uh, just for your opinion. Uh, one is, do we think we still want to fix County Road, the Class Four part? This summer, this spring, as time allows, I'm just thinking if, uh, if we're going to, I want to start gearing up for that and preparing. This has been a conversation you guys have been having? It was a conversation. Mm -hmm. So I can't remember. Were we thinking we were going to get funded from FEMA to do that? I think we've got a placeholder. Right? We do. Okay. Did we, we dubbed that as County Road Extension. Yep. So there is a placeholder. Trying and to find how much. Would that, um, is that going to be another example of a project that we end up getting 90% funding for through FEMA and everything else? If we do it, sure. Yeah. 90 plus 10, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, County Road yeah. Extension, we have an estimate of $37,053 to fix up. So we would get. Uh, 97.8% of that. Mm -hmm. I think we should do it. For sure. Okay. Do you have an opinion then? Yeah, I think we should. I mean, that was of the opinion last fall. Right. right. We tried to do it, and then right. the winter came too come, soon. Yeah. I mean, it would seem to have, it's going to be improved mm -hmm. even better than it was before the flood. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. It seemed still, easy be those funds. Four. still will be a class four. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's and the there's a brook there that has caused the issue. Right. Mm -hmm. It goes right down the middle of the road, doesn't it now? It does Usually, not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's about on the deep. side sometimes. <laughs> that'll be the first thing that I'll have mm -hmm. to fix is get it get that brook flowing back mm -hmm. to where it's supposed to be and then I can fix the road itself. Roughly how long is that? Hmm. I'm gonna try to break it up some. I'm gonna yes. try to stage material uh, down below on Route 14. I've got permission to store stuff there, so I would haul a bunch of it there, and then it's just easier to put it up into the sure. into the washouts as as it goes. So, I mean, all in all, it it, it should be like three weeks probably. And maybe they'll have to get the excavator for just a month this time. Yes. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because um, I don't. I think with our small excavator, it would just take a lot longer. No, I think the money is well spent. Uh, and, and it's in there, the $30,000 that you have. It has excavator time in there as well, so it would be covered. Yeah. Michael, did you have a question? Yes, is that a perennial stream? Um, I'm going to say yes. And we probably need some kind of permit. Okay. We would probably have to pull a permit. Right. We'll have to get Jaron out there to. Uh, Actually, it's Ben Matthews who's coming out on Wednesday, so oh. maybe. Um, Maybe we could have a look at that. I'll get this to you. Well, yes. as far as the neighborhood, they're all in favor of that. They're dangerous yeah. people on that street. I would. <laughs> oh yeah, no, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I had waiting for someone to go flying down through there and end up one of those holes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's happened before. Yeah, yeah we're good. Uh, Thanks, okay, so I'll gear up for that. Uh, I won't start that probably until we get the road shaped up. Yeah. Mud season and all that. For sure. Um, because we got a fair amount of work before that happens. Mm -hmm. um, but I just wanted to get your opinion about that before I... Mm -hmm. And then my next question is uh, the eclipse. Well, what's your thoughts of that? I mean, I'm hearing that... The what? The eclipse that's, that's oh, coming. Oh, yeah. First part of April. Mm -hmm. I'm hearing they're not... They're suggesting people don't go to work, people just stay home. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to expect. Um, I know that I, we're not going to be able to do much machine work on the roads if if there's all kinds of people, bystanders. But they'll mostly be on the main road, don't you think? I have no idea. Yeah. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what to expect. They're no. saying 250,000 people coming yeah. to Vermont. Yeah. Sounds like the hippie evasion of the late 60s. But, <laughs> <laughs> but they stay. <laughs> So do we have another meeting before? Uh, we just talked about the this one, but we rescheduled it. Oh, all right, after this, yeah. 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 <clears throat> I mean, because there's a serious chance it's going to be cloudy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right? Right. right. For and 80 percent right. chance. Those people are still going to be here. Yeah, they will yeah. be. They just won't be hanging out on the roads. So they'll be <laughs> mad because it's cloudy, and they'll be taking right. it they'll out. Right. They'll be out in the bars. We won't have the a locals. problem with that. We don't have a bar. You know, that the outside scene on our back roads. That could right. be. Mm -hmm. Normally, Alfie, Al how long is the work day? Uh, <laughs> like, what day is the normal work day? day is yeah, normal day. Nine hours. Nine. 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 I, sorry, I should ask. What time does the normal work day end? Four o'clock. Four o'clock. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. But that's a lot of people, and they're yeah. not going to all just, yeah. you know what I mean? Mm. It's, yeah. So I talked to Timmy. Timmy has vacation time. I have vacation time. We're both willing to you know, use our own time for taking that day off. Mm -hmm. So that our machines aren't out there causing liability to the town and we're not getting frustrated trying to do our thing and we can't because there's so many people. Mm -hmm. Just a suggestion, I, I'd love to hear your comments on because I don't know what that makes sense. I, 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 think taking the day yeah. off. I think everybody should take the day off. Yeah. Um, there's no school that day, so you don't have to worry about school buses. They already closed yeah. school. Um, mm -hmm. So that makes sense to me. Yeah, we just okay. hear so many warnings. Yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, it, amazing. And this, could, this may not be done that day yeah. either. Well, those people could be staying here, you know, some of them will be here a week. Yeah. Probably be buying property once they see how nice it is. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just don't know what to expect. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know. So we'll plan on resting the I think that makes there. sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Get your glasses out. Get my glasses out. <laughs> Are there still any left? No, we gave them all away. Them all away. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You can get them on Amazon for $5. Uh -huh. Obviously, it's got a big bucket of all oh. the cabinets. So, can you get it free? Yeah. Uh, so, unless there's other questions, that's all I've got. Yeah. I have a question. So, uh, it's I think this would fall under road report. Um, somebody approached me about cars parking on Maple Hill, um, saying it's the people that park uh, for the Sawyer's P runs classes and stuff. Yeah. And the cars park along that road, and somebody approached me saying that they have trouble when they need to get big trucks through because of where the cars are parked. They have to drive over enough so that um, 
apparently tree branches on the other side scratch up the rigs that they're driving. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to bring it up, A, because it was brought to me, and so I feel like that's my duty. Um, I feel like you had had an issue maybe at one point with trying to get the road trucks through. Yes. Same mm -hmm. problem. Yeah. Um, so I'm suggesting I'd like to just go talk to the guy who owns the business mm -hmm. about it, see if he's got another place he can have people park. I feel like that would be a good well, step. They, they actually used the town office this weekend. Oh, okay. Uh, there was four vehicles and I know they were headed there. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so I couldn't plow, you know, I, I was able to keep it open, but I couldn't plow the whole yard. Mm. Uh, uh, through that through that mm. time that they were here for the weekend. Mm. So they're taking so it's a problem for the road, but also a problem for yeah. other places. So I, they think, feel I think they he needs to build himself a parking spot. Well, I mean, it was, he owns that field down below his shop. Yeah, he can. He's going to have to build something. He can't. I mean, it's a public right of way. It's not for his his business parking. And these guys have complained about it. I, 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 I talked to him last last mm -hmm. year, and I said I told him this this can't happen. Okay. And usually they're pretty good when they see me coming. They come out yeah. and move, but, but then you have it to takes wait. time. I'm sitting there waiting. Yeah. In the truck mm -hmm. idling, waiting mm -hmm. for them to come out and move their vehicles. Mm -hmm. So this deal, uh, I, have so a I think I really don't. Need to do I think that's so. always the great first step. It for does sure. sound like you already had one, but maybe mm -hmm. hearing. That there are other people who are having issues too. Maybe you know, hearing it from a couple different sources um, would do something, and then I guess we can just revisit after that and Good see where that goes. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, Thank of you, course. John. John, before you leave, I think you had your hand up a second ago. I was going to comment on the uh, eclipse stuff. If everything's just shutting down in order to free people to go off and stare at the clouds and be disappointed when the clouds get dark. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's all the it's all the everything, but you know what that's going to mean for Woodbury is kind of hard to say. Yeah. Yeah. Stay yeah. closed again. Stop eleven eight. Probably. So Are the state yeah. offices closing? We're not. No. I can't speak for. People. I would imagine. A lot of people can work from I've not heard anything, but we're not. Um, but then you know our business is is not really, you know, it's investigations. There's mm -hmm. always work to be done, so it doesn't matter so much on the things that <laughs> Thank roads you. and traffic. So, Alfie, that sounded like that was, wraps it up? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, right. yeah, unless there's other questions. I have one more, you guys. Yeah, do it. Uh -huh. um, it's, it's, another, it's another parking one. It's Old Quarry Road. I yeah, actually okay. honestly can't quite remember where we left that. I. Don't, I know we never got a copy of the letter. There's no certified letter. It has the select board has to create a certified letter, um, and hopefully have a time frame, deadline, and then it gets towed. So and then we're going to still have to pay for it. Night was it night? <coughs> Ninety something dollars from Gates, you said. Yep. Unless if we can get them to have it towed, would be the other alternative, right? Like mm -hmm. see if they will do it. Um, do okay. they? Do they? I mean, do they care about this car? It doesn't look like it's I ever like it's been used. Don't know. I've been wanting to drive up and look, and I just haven't like I haven't made the time to do it. Yeah. It's probably kind of money. But it looks it's like storage. And also, late, lately mm -hmm. there's been another car parked there. I, I don't know if it maybe Alan, mm -hmm. but he's been parking there. And so, so, yeah. And Chris, yeah, Chris had asked me. Chris Kudos has asked me to kind of keep it open, mm -hmm. but if there's a car there, mm -hmm. I can't. I can't. Mm -hmm. So, and the car is like approaching out into the road as mm -hmm. the snow kept coming, and so to plow it, you're weaving out, and it this that's unsafe. It's just mm -hmm. that car shouldn't be either. Yeah, so you there's just tools just, in there uh, that are causing problems. Jezebel was parking up there at the top and walking down her. That was through the winter. Yes. So do I understand that these folks have never had a letter? We have no um, proof Evidence. that they've ever yeah. gotten a letter. Um, supposedly there was a letter that was brought to them, but we don't know if they ever received it, and none of us have actually seen a copy of the letter. Right. Um, okay. So I, that, to me, makes me feel like we sort of need to backtrack and just mm -hmm. go Start back over. to before yeah. that step. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know, to me... I don't know if it makes more sense to 
start the process again with the letter, but if it's all the people who live on that road that are parking there, maybe like one more try at a conversation before, like, or several conversations. Because you, you um, I somebody think go had... talk to them once. Yeah. One of the groups. There's yeah. several different right. groups right. involved. Um, and we've gotten a lot of complaints mm -hmm. from all of them, like, about each other. And also from other people. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. But I just feel like spring is coming. This is the opportunity for them to find other places to stash their vehicles. It's going to be coming with spring. Easier, right. It's going right. to be easier yeah. for them. So I feel like this is the time to revisit it and like not mm -hmm. let it just kind of I think we should just apart. wait till things dry out. Mm -hmm. I think they should have a heads up, yeah. you know, like Well, the, the one car that's been there all along. The one that that, that needs yeah. to be moved on. Yeah. yeah. You know, we've already had conversations with them. Yes. We have I think there was a letter. I don't know if it got to them or and we just don't have a, I don't know where that letter is. Yeah. Maybe a conversation with Chris. We were we had that, that conversation several times. Okay. So that's that's so we need water. to draft. So him. we'll just I mean maybe one more conversation. I'm happy to go with you if that helps and I'll just you know argue my point. Uh-huh. And if they just don't have the means, I can hook onto it with one of my trucks or the loader with the forks and we can get it out of there. Very little cost to the town. So if they just say, we don't care, take it, then right, you could just take it. Huh? But it's yeah. not just one group of people. Like, so I right, am Right, but feeling... like you said, sorry to interrupt, yeah. but like you said, it's spring. Mm -hmm. The people that are now causing problems won't be there because the snow will be gone. They can drive down into their, mm -hmm. to their space. Yeah, Alan can yeah. drive into his driveway and... But we'll have to stay on to it. Mm -hmm. in, the, in the winter, next winter, we got to stay on to it and... Why can't they hire somebody to plow? They could plow down in there a ways, uh -huh. keep it off mm -hmm. of off of Cabot Road, mm -hmm. and make themselves an area. I have to plow my driveway. Everybody yeah. in this room has to plow or pay somebody to plow their driveway. They can do it there. Is the car that is in the middle of the road, like up near the top near Cabot mm -hmm. Road? It is uh -huh. okay. Yeah. And, uh, and then the worst part is, is that we can tell they you have sometime. no land to park a vehicle on. Mm -hmm. They just don't. Yeah. Well, most of the stuff that's there is in our right of way. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, their campers that they're mm -hmm. living in is, is in our right of way. That's our the town right of way. Yeah. So, which is another whole issue, but um, mm -hmm. I think we've got to stay on top of it. Mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. So I guess the question is, is the board uh, interested in sending another letter, or does it sound like another visit? or? Start with a letter and then a visit. That's my visit. question. Yeah. Or a visit and a letter at the same time. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I like conversations better than letters, but... I'm sure. Mm -hmm. You're willing to do it? I am, mm -hmm. yeah. But actually, Afi, if you don't mind coming too, I, I, can. I do yeah. think it would help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Um, so I have, I would recommend that you send letters to all of the landowners there with cars so that next winter there's an understanding of what they can and can't do with their cars, mm -hmm. and it's they've sent up, been given a certified letter also, so you have proof that you know it could be after the conversation, yeah. you have all summer and next year, but it would be good to have um, documentation of an understanding that you have with other property owners other than the ones that are you know with the old junk cars, so that you have something to stand on next winter if it becomes a problem. I, agree I with that. think that 100% documentation. Mm -hmm. Yep. So it sounds though like the, our, the first thing that has to happen is, is this one car needs to be addressed. Um, that you and Alfie are willing to do a visit with a letter in hand uh -huh. indicating that if they don't move it, and you're willing to offer to help them move it out of the roadway. And then we'll follow up with some sort of letter as a board. Uh, to all the other homeowners or folks that are there indicating our, the expectations for next winter and the consequences I, for next winter. I like that plan. What do you think, Diana? Uh, I think if uh, we wait till things dry out now, is that person living there, Brandy? Yep. You're the one that goes by there. Yep. Two of them or just one? She has two kids. Hmm? She has two kids. But I mean, is the guy there 
No, just the woman. I know, in, I know there's a path to his campers, yeah. but I, there's no vehicle of his. Okay. Yeah. I was hoping maybe they were gone for the winter, but no. no. Um. I'm says sensing a little hesitation on your part. Well, you know, yeah, it'd be nice during the winter. I mean, the other thing it would be nice to do during the summer is somehow designate w where our right-of-way is and where people shouldn't be parking. I mean, some of the across... It's already designated. Hmm? I mean, it's the center line of the road out... Oh, I know, but that, that's right? not... Yeah. People can't see that. <laughs> we talked about putting up some... Signs and right, but they've got they've got fence. They've got like a fence right in our right away. Oh, okay, right, the, the right one at the top of yeah. our road. Yeah, and so you'd have to go through that fence to mm. oh. to delineate our right away. Yeah. Okay. So that I think that's a separate issue, which is right. going to take a, right. a, a, a letter. Yeah. Probably several letters, and and probably enforcement. Mm -hmm. That's at some point. Mm -hmm. But I think this car, this single car that's dead and had been there, has been there for probably a year now, I'm going to say, just guessing, that that needs to be dealt with, like, now. So that's we're a good not plan. planning it all summer long. So <coughs> Whether it works right now, we'll set to see, otherwise we'll just have to tell it. Sure. You guys want me to draft a letter? I'm happy to do that if you sure. guys <coughs> agree to it. Can you bring it for the next yes. meeting? Yep. Yeah. And then we can right. approve it at that meeting? Yes. I'm happy to go with you guys if it's not work hours. Somehow. Or it can be early in the morning. I think like afternoon work. is better anyway. When I went there before with, um, I'm looking at his name right now, Josh Corn, mm -hmm. and um, the information that I had was that they're usually there like after five or after six. Mm -hmm. okay. So I think that's the better time. It might be anyway. difficult for you, but yeah. I'm happy I'll to go. Make sure. I'll yeah. make sure. I'll do it. Okay. But soon. So, so. Okay. We have no way to get a hold of her except by a letter, right? I mean, no phone can... or anything like that. Right? Oh, I have no idea. Okay. I think it's time to move on to the recovery officer's report. All right. So, a few things have happened since I last gave my report to you folks. Uh, one important thing is the cost sharing has changed to the point where FEMA will now cover 90% of the expenditures. The state will cover 7.8%. So that leaves us with 2.2% of our expenditures that will come out of our pockets. So that was exciting. And I believe I sent this to you folks indicating that that benchmark had been uh, reached and we're only on the hook now for 2.2%. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, I'll just give a little background, uh, especially for you, Chris, being you. new on the board. Uh, so I've been working on this project with Danielle Littlera since probably last July when I was first appointed. And throughout that time frame, we have developed documentation called uh, Damage Inventories, which in fact, uh, sitting with, with Alfie, we've been able to define well, I believe there were 56 discrete or 64 discrete places in Woodbury where damages occurred to the road. And so, sitting with Alpha, we've made up these 56 uh, damage inventories and quantified the cost to repair. Um, so, with that, some of the documents that we've compiled and sent to FEMA include the road crew timesheets, weekly timesheets from July through December a road crew calendar, which uh, we derived information of work locations and hours per work location from July through December. Contractor invoices from August through October. Equipment rental invoices from August to December. Materials, sand and gravel invoices from August through December. Uh, invoices for barriers and safety cones and invoices to replenish the stockpile. That's just some of the information we've sent. And working with Brandy, she has all that information at hand. And 
So we have invoices and proof of payment, which in the form of checks, which she's photocopied and we've scanned and sent to, to FEMA. And we upload all this stuff into what they call a grants portal. And this information gets uploaded per project, and I'll get to this little spreadsheet that I've, I've made for everyone. So, just as a, an example, Blake Hill Road, <clears throat> which is near and dear to my heart, um, the damage inventory includes 24 files. So the 24 files are labor and material spreadsheets. There were three distinct locations on Blake Hill Road where damages occurred, so we had to make out discrete uh, damage inventory for that. And here's an example of a damage inventory. And I, th this stuff is all digitized. If anyone wants, wants to see copies of it, I can certainly send it to them. And we also have to make out maps. And I have access to the Vermont Enhanced 911 mapping uh, system. So in this case, there were three distinct locations in Lake Hill Road that had issues. So I shot Latin Law and sent this to FEMA. And this is a spreadsheet that Danielle made out. She's an, an expert Excel person. And uh, what this includes are uh, temporary and permanent labor hours. So Alfie and his crew came in in a temporary emergency situation and got the road passable. Then they came back to do the permanent repairs. So this, this is comprised of temporary labor hours and permanent labor hours. Uh, the equipment that they used, in this case it was a grader, uh, two dump trucks, a freight liner, a T-Rex excavator, a caterpillar wheel loader. And... You're doing great. I know. <laughs> all this stuff is brand new. You know, I'm a telecommunications guy, so I know so much more about six inch minus and hip wrap and stuff like that. I never thought I'd know. So anyhow. And the permanent, they use basically the same stuff, you know, the same equipment. And for material, they used a uh, riprap two inch minus, who knows what that is, and three quarter inch stay mat to do the permanent repair. So all this information gets uploaded into the FEMA grants portal where they act on it or not. And that's all on Blake Hill Road? That's just for Blake Hill Road. And you had 64 of those? Correct. Mm -hmm. Well, thank so, you. So Danielle and I, you know, she's really good. So we've been somewhat busy. Uh, you know, you're really good too. Wow. You know, she does a lot. So we had a meeting with FEMA today, which was good. And it was a two-part meeting. One to look at Town Highways 23 and 24, uh, bridge replacement there whether or not we're going to do any mitigation work there. That's to build it better, so as hopefully it won't flood again. So I just wanted to uh, be assured that I knew the nuances of what a mitigation project is and what they would accept from the town of Woodbury as uh, documentation for a mitigated mitigation project. And Diana was there at the meeting. Uh, so we have to do a hydrologic study and a hydraulic study just to make sure that we're doing it properly. We'll need an engineering study and then we'll need a cost study for uh, engineering labor materials, installation, uh, hardware for the bridges, whatever that, that is, is estimate. So right now in our <clears throat> little sheet, we have, I think, $542,000 for the larger span and $497,000 for the smaller span. And that was based on an engineering study by the Wolf. So we put that in as a placeholder, and it appears as though the select board wants to move forward with replacing those bridges in a permanent basis. So we'll have to do that as, as a mitigation project. This, uh, there was a timeline, I think it was a time, November maybe last year, when we had to have something to put in. So uh, we had been talking with the Wolf Engineering about maybe doing some help with the rail trail and things like that. And, and they couldn't, 
they didn't actually work for us on any, do any engineering, but they did offer to do this. And so this is not a contractor estimate, it's an engineer estimate. Sure. And it's, it's probably pretty high, but, but it's a, enough to give us mm -hmm. a, a number to put in the slot yeah. there. And, and it, 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 is it to have the damage inventories done by the end of November, or we wouldn't be able to apply for funding for those two projects. And this mitigation project that is also 90% state, or 90% FEMA. Exactly the same. It, it, exactly the same. So 2.2% is right. town of Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because we looked at this and, oh my goodness, if we had to pay even 25% of this, yeah, that would be too much. But you know, I don't think it will be this high. So some of them, you, you'll find that I'm a frequent emailer. So I sent out uh, mitigation disaster, mitigate disaster damage with FEMA public assistance, which we're doing for those two bridges. And it's like a, a cheat sheet on workflows. So I sent it to you folks. And there's a process flow chart. And what it does is it gives who's responsible for what in terms of uh, <clears throat> mitigation opportunities to prove prevent future damage, that's what we did today. We sat down with FEMA, FEMA and the applicant, Woodbury's the applicant, and so they agreed that this project would fall under a mitigation project, which is good. So now based upon uh, water studies and engineering studies and other information, we'll have to write a scope of work. And it's just like a normal project, you know, you do a scope of work. So that's between FEMA and us as the applicant. We'll sit down, we'll write a, a comprehensive scope of work. We'll estimate the cost. That again, FEMA and the applicant. And we'll determine the cost effect effectiveness of the uh, mitigation project. And this will be at 100%. You know, so it'll be 2.2% will fall upon the town of Woodbury to pay for that. I and think the, uh, what were you just talking about, a cost of, uh, estimate of? The cost effectiveness. No, I mean before that, you're talking about. The estimated cost of the hazard mitigation yeah, project, okay. HMP. I think uh, that's part of what the engineer does, is give us a, an estimate of, I mean, well, yeah, we'll this plan, but also going forward, going to do the scope of work. That's what you were talking about. Scope right. Of work. Yeah. So. With the scope of work and the engineering studies and the cost of materials, we would come to the conclusion what the estimated cost of the hazard mitigation project would be. So with that, then we would FEMA would sit down and say, okay, how cost effective is this? Is this 15% cost effective or 100% cost effective? They agreed that anything we did to improve the water flow and improve the height of the bridge improve the bridge construction would be a hundred percent mitigation great. project. So that's great. And then we would come to an agreement, we would sign some sort of document, and then the contractor would perform the work. Then we'd have a project close out and the money would flow to Woodbury. Mm -hmm. Are there are the deadlines the same? Well that mm -hmm. was my issue one of my issues. So I asked, is there a deadline for which this project would have to be completed, and they didn't know. Hmm. If I go on the, uh, the grants portal, some of these projects have a due date of January 25th, 2025. So I'm hoping that hmm. this, these two mitigation projects would not fall into January 25th, 2025, because you know, just, I don't know if you could do that work and that shorter time frame. Do they have an extension program for people who can't get the work done in time? What kind of a program? An extension? Uh, I don't know. So were they going to get back to you? Let you know? Yeah, one of the, uh, yeah. the project manager who then took a note and um, yeah, he's going to get back. Yeah, he was skiing yesterday for the first time in his life. Oh, <laughs> cross country skiing. Cross country skiing. <laughs> and he said he was great on the flats. <laughs> <laughs> the downhill, 
Is that the one from North Carolina? North Carolina? He's from Tennessee. Oh, Tennessee. He's yeah. the guy who told us what bug dust is. What what is? Bug dust. Bug dust? What is it? Yeah. Well, all of the information we send is very meticulously prepared. And so they realize that, you know, our stuff is pretty good that we send them. And he said, you guys get down into the bug dust. And I didn't know what bug dust meant. Well, when I first heard you use the term granular a couple years ago, I didn't know what that meant either. Did he ready? There we go. You guys knew that before? Yes. Um, okay. That's what you have to clean up when somebody is coming. Yeah. <laughs> I have just one thing to add to what Skip said. This meeting um, that's going to happen on Wednesday afternoon um, is partly the H&H uh, the &H folks, the hydrology and hydraulics for the bridges. Um, and then um, there will also be a stream um, engineer uh, named Ben Matthews, it used to be Jared Borg, and of Woodbury's in his territory, oh. to look at the totality of the stream from the top of the ridge, let's say by rays down, to see what things can be done um, to actually try to alleviate the flooding in the village. Um, so it's good that all three of them will be there um, mm -hmm. to kind of confer about this. Ron Rathborn Burn will be joining us. Um, so I'd like Skip might try to make it and, and Alfie's going to be mm -hmm. there. So um, the stream part is sort of coming from the Planning Commission and, and our efforts to try to make or try to see what the possibilities are for life in Woodbury Village post-flood era or during the flood era that we're in, mm -hmm. what the possibilities are. Um, and so there might be actually some stream mitigation that would happen also. Um, mm -hmm. That wouldn't be a FEMA thing, it would be more through the uh, flood resilient communities fund that John and, and Paul were, were talking about. Um, but that would, it would be a major project and the initial step would be engineering um, study and design. Um, so that's kind of two things that are happening with the stream and the bridges. So well, when time. you have all those people up at Carroll Rays, I hope you'll have some of them. Oh uh, God, it's going to be snowy. But look at the beaver dams that people are always worried about. You know, I have snowshoed in there. The only time you can really snowshoe th through there is in the winter time. Yeah. And uh, I haven't been, I didn't go last winter because of my surgery. I didn't go this winter because the winter was so crappy and I didn't really trust the ice. But yeah. all of the dams from Buck Lake down, um, they're pretty much all old. There isn't really much water behind them. There, there is some. The main body of water is right at Carroll Rays. Mm -hmm. And I believe that's partially a man-made Dam, mm -hmm. and I've seen cement mm -hmm. and yeah, stuff there. Mm -hmm. um, so that that's the one spot. Everything behind it, at least two years ago, um, there really wasn't a concern. Mm -hmm. um, I like to go in there. It's great for animal tracks. There's all kinds of activity mm -hmm. there in the winter. Um, but um, yeah, so yeah, I mean, I don't know what the situation is right now or, or what happened in July, but there's just there's quite a big basin of drainage that that flows into Buck Lake and mm -hmm. then um, and then down, you know, through the wetlands and brooks. So. And down the mountain. And down the mountain. Right? Yeah. And all the clearing that's been done. Well the quarry side, um, the east side, that all flows into Picket Pond and then down into mm -hmm. East Long and Nichols and into the Lamarty. So anything that we can see mm -hmm. from that here that does flow down, mm -hmm. but the other side it goes a different, a different way. Thank you to you guys for going and being part of that conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, we'll, I guess we'll let the select board know what, um, what comes of it. I, you guys are all sound like you are definitely going to be working, so uh, I, I feel bad. Uh, it sounds like it's important, but there'll be, there'll be enough. There'll be enough people there. Thank you. So another bit of information came from Kim Kanarecki, who is the uh, Vermont State Public Assistance mm -hmm. Officer. And I sent this out to you folks, too. Mm -hmm. And it gives guidance on hydrologic and hydraulic studies and what they should entail. 
So uh, I showed this to uh, the FEMA folks, and this is spot on. This is what they are looking for. Mm -hmm. So once we get that study, I'll right. just forward that on to FEMA. Do you know what the difference is between the hydrologic and hydraulic? <laughs> yeah, so one has to do with water flow, yeah. and the other one has to do with stuff in the water, I think. Or, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I, I told the guys today I was glad that they started calling it H and H because I never could tell the difference between hydrology and hydraulic or yeah. hydrogea or whatever. Yeah. yeah. I think the hydrology is the big picture. Yeah. And the hydraulics is the, the what's movement. actually flowing yeah. in the streams. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's a mm -hmm. a guess. It's a good guess. Yeah. 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 I never studied that. Yeah. <laughs> And the, one of the people coming on Wednesday, uh, Keith, um, I don't remember his last name, but he mentioned to me that the studies would have to be a little bit different depending on the span of the bridge. So like Carol Ray's is under 20 feet, the other bridge is over 20, 20 feet. So there are different, that, yeah. different requirements mm. in, uh, in um, what their study would be for those, mm. what, those two things. Yeah. Well, as long as they can get it done in a timely fashion. Yeah. We'll be happy with that. Yeah, these are VTrans state folks, and it won't cost the town anything to have those studies done. Cool. So lastly, there's a uh, spreadsheet that I gave everyone. And this is an up-to-date spreadsheet of the information that is now sitting with FEMA project managers. And you'll see in some of the columns the approximate cost of project title, approximate cost, scope surveys, and that's just a bunch of questions that you're required to answer on your own. Grants portal. And EEIs are essential elements of information. And again, those are files that we send to FEMA with timesheets and cost of materials and things like that. So if you go to the, the last sheet, so the total amount of money that's sitting at FEMA now is $270,013.15. So the state and FEMA's combined share of that, which we can expect to see in Brandy's treasury, would be $201,837.82. And Woodbury's share would be $5,175 and change. That's only for these ones that you've already submitted. Right, so there's about $130,000 now that I, you know, myself and uh, Danielle have to reconcile, make sure the files are ready to send to them. Mm -hmm. And I expect within, by the end of April, we'll have all the information that FEMA needs, needs to move forward mm -hmm. and start doing their, their, their process. Mm -hmm. So I asked, you know, when could we expect to see money going to Woodbury, yeah. and they didn't, didn't have a group. So it's a two-stage process, anyhow. You know, FEMA can approve all this stuff, then the money flows to the state, and we have to sign an agreement, or Brandy signs an agreement with the state to have, I forget the name of the agreement, or select board signs it, and then money can start flowing to Woodbury. Thank you for doing this. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't sound fun. Yeah. In a perverse way, it's fun. Yeah. How critical. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, you know, I'm a taxpayer here, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so mm -hmm. anything I can do. Appreciate it. Can I ask for the DI, uh, like in, when you look on that first page, the highlighted one, it says this DI. And costs or D1, maybe it is? Uh, yeah, I think damage and damage. Damage and damage. There we go. No, I'm going to drop that one. Thanks. That was just something for me to say that the damage inventory was moved to a different project. Got it. Oh. So it's just a reminder. Mm -hmm. Any questions from the board? Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, moving on, almost on time. Um, moving on to appointments. Oh, we were going to talk about this energy grant. 
Oh, sorry. I thought you're uh, oh. that we are tail end of that conversation. No, this will be real quick. Yeah. Um, so let me find notes. Okay. So um, uh, there's a mini grant that um, that um, where is it? Hang on a second. Uh, from the Department of Buildings and General Services uh, for four thousand dollars that has already been approved and designated for Woodbury. It's for, uh, it's called the Municipal Energy Resilience Grant. Um, so there are different projects um, and different things that it can be used for. Um, uh, community events, uh, you know, where different people might come and have uh, energy saving spiels, so, you know, like a, like a kind of a energy fair or something accessibility to buildings, any energy planning, uh, website enhancements, um, different mailings about um, stuff, uh, and um, you know, technical support for um, weatherization, you know, just kind of energy stuff. Um, and not hard stuff. Not hard stuff, not, not any implementation. Um, and so the money has already been designated to the town. Um, it won't, there's no match. Um, we just have to say, uh, yes, we would like to take this money and then come up with a project. The Planning Commission has talked about this some. Um, and one of the thoughts we had is that, um, you know, we're still trying to fix up this town hall so that we can meet, and, and there's the issue of the heating, et cetera. We did have a efficiency of Vermont um, assessment that was kind of bogus and half past um, but we could um, you know use this money to get um, technical support for what we could do to um, you know make the building energy efficient um, and it could be used to hire a consultant to come up with that um, and that's kind of uh, you know a thought that the Planning Commission had that this might be a good way to use this money um, unless you know the select board has other ideas but it seems a shame to kind of and the reporting on it which originally when it came to us um, it was very kind of granular reporting and now it's just basically telling them what you did for the project you don't have to even send them in the timeline the timeline is um, well a deadline to decide is May 31st yeah. and then there's uh, like a couple years to, to okay. have it done so um, there's no hurry to decide about it. I can send you more information about it. So mm -hmm. then it could be something that the select board looks at at mm -hmm. another meeting or two. We have mm -hmm. till May 31st to make a decision. You need a motion from the board just that we approve that, or uh, no? It's just for your information at this point. No. Great. Yeah, we already at Thank one you. point said we didn't want it because we couldn't think of anything. But then the planning commission got involved, and they're more they're more uh, imaginative. <laughs> So and the one thing that, that, that I thought might be good is that you said you could use it for the window dressers program to yeah, help absolutely. subsidize the cost of these <coughs> store windows that people could come and make. So mm -hmm. that would be, that's kind of a, a hard cost. Yeah. One of the issues with the town hall is that it's on the historical register, so doing some of this work on the building um, might raise some Yeah, we already had a them. couple of studies done there. Yeah. So that was okay. that about that. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, now um, appointments. Um, right. So I have checked with a lot of these people. See you there. Oh, wait. We we're going to appoint you. Oh, <laughs> we're still going to appoint you even though you left. <laughs> now we're going to use the table. You have a sneaking thing. That's hilarious. So, yeah, road commissioner has said yes. Planning commission, uh, Michael has um, a list, of, names, a list yeah. of all the, yeah. Who are they? <laughs> that they're, so um, Jano Lorndow, um, uh, David Barnowski, Barnowski um, Andrew Delaney, and uh, Jim Schweighau. All of their terms end in 2024. Yeah. Meeting like town meeting. Yeah, town meeting. Yeah. But okay. they're all. And they all are willing to stay on. Great. Yeah. 
So, um, Zoning Board of Adjustment does not really have an incumbent, but we do have someone who is willing to be appointed, and that's Jonah Meacham. And do we make that appointment here? Mm-hmm. Like right now? Yeah. I, mm, no. Or we could do them all at once. I have to do them all at once. It sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> CVRPC rep is Michael Gray. I believe he said he's I'll willing to continue with that. We don't have an alternate for that, but no. If you ever think I'll of one, keep on trying to get somebody from the plan commission mm -hmm. to so far no bites. We That's have E nine one one coordinator, Mr. Thomas Lindsay, who is willing to be appointed to that, and also to be reappointed as a recovery officer, which I did not put on this list. Robin's going to write all these letters, right? Pam is. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you tell her. <laughs> Our first constable, um, Gary Clark, is willing to be reappointed. Our tree warden, Jim Schweighelm, is willing to be appointed. Our CV fiber rep, John Reed, who we recently were appointed, but we thought we'd just do it again. Maybe you can drag out that letter that we sent. And also Michael is willing to be the uh, alternate to that one, Michael Gray. And now comes the tricky step. I don't know if we ever officially announced that Joshua Corn had resigned as the town health officer, but that was too bad. He served for about maybe a year and a half. Mm -hmm. uh, he has other business. Can I suggest that we uh, move to approve these folks? Oh, good um, idea. As uh, yeah. appointees, and then we can have a discussion about. Okay. Motion. Yeah. Motion. To approve. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? I, I move that we um, approve all of. Uh, we approve. Uh, Jonah Meacham to the Zoning Board of Adjustment, Michael Gray to the CVRPC rep, uh, Skip Tom, Thomas Lindsay as the E911 coordinator, Gary Clark as the first constable, Jim Schweithelm as the tree warden, John Reed and Michael Gray as the alternate CV fiber rep. And also um, Alfie Larrabee as the road commissioner. Skip Lindsay as the uh, recovery officer also. And, as the recovery. and the planning commission. Jane, yeah. Dave, and Andy, and Jim as planning commissioners. I'll second your motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Motion approved. All right. So the next positions apparently we don't have any interest. Mm -hmm. uh, we had interest, didn't we, for town health officer? But I, I never. Sense. Yeah, I sent her all the information from VLCT stating what it. Okay. Um, didn't hear back. anything back? I did not. No. Okay. That one scares people off. Yeah, I'd be scared. Yeah, yes. people think that it's about helping people be healthy, but it's really about helping people not have failed septic systems. Yeah. Or other problems. Or other things. Yeah, <laughs> or other. Yeah. In the absence of a town health officer, I guess who gets to be the uh, default uh, health officer? Is the select board? The, the vice, chair. Vice chair. Yes. I wish. Oh no. Unfortunately, it's the chair. Do you get to be the All the other things too, Diana. Yeah. All right. So sounds like. Default. Yeah. The chair is the town health officer. Well, you don't have to write that down. No. That just is a fact. Yeah. Okay. A fact. Are you uh, are you all the other stuff too on the list? Oh, the By yeah. The, I'd like it, no. the the animal control. Yeah. Don't think all of it. No. Of I don't think there's any other defaults. Okay. okay. <laughs> well, probably it's not, there's no like uh, leaving one of these and uh, offices vacant. It's not necessarily a problem. Until we find someone. Yeah. Is that true? Been well, taken all year since I started, or right. several of them have. Yeah, I did not. Um, uh, last year, Kim Silk was still willing to be the pound keeper and the dangerous buildings officer, but I hadn't contacted him yet, so I don't know. Transportation Advisory Committee and Solid Waste, uh, Chris 
Codius was doing those, but he's not anymore. I might be willing to do the transportation um, the TAC thing. It's yeah. another regional planning commission thing. It's uh -huh. one meeting a month. Um, so I might just find out how much is involved in that because I don't want to do too much mm -hmm. more than I'm doing. Um, can we, I was hoping you would say town energy coordinator. Oh. Well, um, <laughs> we haven't had one of those for a long time. No, um, the planning commission is sort of doing that. Mm -hmm. and, and, um, mm -hmm. and there may be actually somebody on the planning commission that may be mm. interested in that. I have, is there such a, does the Hardwick Woodbury Rail Trail Committee, does that still exist? There should be one. According to the lease, there is supposed to be one. It's our obligation to appoint someone okay. to, I don't know how many positions there used to be. Uh, Hardwick has, but I know that, um, I can never remember his name. Uh, Jim, he's on the select Jim board. On the Hale, Danny Hale. Hale. Danny Hale, yeah, was appointed by the Hardwick board. I did read that. In the, we used to have three or four people from yeah, Woodbury. Yeah, Jim was in. I was thinking of maybe asking Eric Moeller or maybe that guy Peter who was instrumental in letting us know that there were holes in the rail trail. Yeah, maybe somebody from the, like the mountain tanners um, who, who actually lives in Woodbury. There was actually, yeah, at one time it was, you know, what's your name from East Callis. I can't remember that name either. Peggy Bowen. Yes, thank you. Right. <laughs> Just down the road. Well, you're 10 years younger than me, so. <laughs> I've been around too long. <laughs> Yeah, but anyways, yeah, it would be good. Uh, now we can see that there might be a need for that at some time. So, mm -hmm. it'd be good to find somebody for that. So, should we revisit this next month or next yes. two weeks and see if we can come mm -hmm. up with some uh, yeah. folks that would volunteer for these? Sure. Now and, then? and maybe I could do like a front, something on the website or French Porch Forum. Um, just a list of another. Um, I used to be the HCTV rep and sort of oh. considered that a Woodbury responsibility because they're here yeah. filming our meetings yeah. and stuff. Um, I stopped doing that um, when I started dealing with uh, my cancer. So um, we, it might be great to see if anybody would be interested in doing that. Are you still on the board? <coughs> no, I got off the oh. HCTV board. Okay. Oh yeah, they're not <coughs> on the list here anymore. Huh. Okay. What about zone administrator? That so, was John and John, right? Mm -mm, it's Bob Martin. Yeah. Oh, I'm looking, sorry, the, I'm not uh, honest. I'm in my town report. But the town report was wrong on that one thing. That he was appointed last year, reappointed, and it's a three-year term. Three-year? Yeah. So it should be a term expires 2026 instead of 24. Great. Yeah. And uh, I didn't ask Norman about the Woodbury Fund, but they're pretty stable. The Woodbury Fund, do you know what that is? It's money that was left uh, to the town by Hugo Meyer for um, used for grants to do things in the town. Sometimes they go outside of town a little bit. But, uh, there's a board. Um, for years, Peter Peltz was managing it, but um, now Norman's in charge. And there's a board including Robin Durkee, Grady Neal, Alex Peltz, George Sawyer, Gary Smith, and Natalia Zahn. And we reappoint them every year. Okay. So, but I'll check with Norman first and we can do that next meeting. What about emergency management director? Oh. That's um, John, John Gordon. Gordon. John Gordon. Yeah. But we should have. Oh, we should have been in that first group there. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. The emergency management director. Also, there's still one position open on the planning commission. So oh. If you want to have seven. Mm -hmm. There's six members at the moment. Um, how often does that meet? Once a month. Once a month. So who isn't on there? I've got seven listed in the book. Who do you have listed? Do you have I, Lizzie listed? Yeah. Yeah, uh, okay, well, I okay. made it. When we were doing the town report, I, I 
crossed her name out and, and made a note that she um, was no longer in the planning commission because the select board was more than enough to do, <laughs> along with raising children and working, etc. So yeah, so. Um, so if anybody else wants to be on the planning commission, right. and we we were trying to come up with names that our last meeting on last week, but didn't come up with anybody. But we were going to sort of try to find someone. Mm -hmm. so. so I'd like to make a motion that we include John Gordon as emergency management director among the list of ones that we approve appointments because he did agree. I will second that. Assume there's no discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Motion passes. Well, so it sounds like we'll come back to these um, available positions. Many um, times. Yeah, many <laughs> times. We'll keep it as a, maybe just as a agenda item yeah. going forward. So do you want this paperwork for the solid waste? Why don't you keep it with your, all your okay. file on it? appointments because okay. we don't have anybody yet. So moving on to select board business um, and that um, we have a, a sales agreement for the sand screen. Um, here, here it is. All right. um, we also have, just running through it, we're going to need to uh, uh, sign contracts for engineering which was pre previously approved. Go over the personnel policy and discuss model rules of procedure and reappraisal status report. So I'd like to make a motion that we we've all had a chance to review this sales contract for the uh, sand screen, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I'd like to move. Well, we approved it last week, but just just make a motion that we sign it and. Just figure out, Alfie, how's the best way to get this to him? Uh, probably email. If I don't know if Have you got disc scanning up yet? Yes, you do. Yeah. Good. He's he's uh, he's awaiting it. So mm -hmm. he knows it's coming. He knows it's coming. So should we date it today, and or just wait until he signs it? We can date it today. Sure. Today's the 25th. Yep. Is that true? I think so. 25th. I hope so, because I brought a check. Four. So, you motion that, made a motion that we sign it. Any mm -hmm. discussion? All those in favor of signing the sales con contract agreement? In the sales Aye. Aye. Uh, Aye. Scan that and send it by email. Thank you. And this is so. Shall we send it on there, or do you want to go down and? Sounds like they're gonna take care of it for us. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. That's done. Um, the contract with the engineering, Ruggles Engineering. These we approved last time, and I just um, took what he had written and sort of filled in the blank so it doesn't say sample agreement, it just says agreement. We just have to date it, and I used his um, format. I really couldn't um, add other names here, but we can still, if you all want to sign it, we can just sign it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And this is Nate Seeker. Nate Seeker. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Okay. Thanks.
should just fill this in below you right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We should do it. Uh, You know, I think that program ended. Okay. No, I don't know that. I'm not sure what that, okay. that you're mm -hmm. referring to. Oh, wait, yeah. Attachments, Appendix 1. What's the warranty? Oh. This one, this version has page 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Is that just an extra copy? Uh, no, there's two separate ones. Uh, one for 20, down highway 23 and one for down highway 23. Okay. No, all right. Mm -hmm. And so this has six pages plus the signature page plus oh, oh, like the page and then the estimated level. Are you brought up in that I'm not sure. Okay. Make sure Diana. Here's the other one. All right. And that's signed. That's just his copy. Oh, I like, thought you already have a copy. You can sign it, it. So like, oh, it if you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so that moves us under the personnel policy, which is okay. not that. It's purchasing policy. So the purchasing policy. We were almost done before Chris left the board. Are you saying purchasing or personnel? Personnel. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That for. Yeah, we don't uh, We were almost done after uh, two, three years of work by the former boards. Well, some year, uh, maybe a year of work and then uh, another year of procrastination. <laughs> <laughs> and confusion. And we really wanted to get it done before Chris left, but it just couldn't happen. There was one question remaining whether, whether we could limit the amount of sick leave that someone can accumulate. So after spending an hour on the, I said this at the last meeting, but after spending an hour on a Zoom meeting with uh, an attorney who had a lot of other suggestions, but basically he said, it, yes, we can limit it and we don't have to limit it, but we ended up not even really changing the wording that we had uh, a month ago. And how is it, work, how is it working currently? So, uh, a full-time employee shall earn 120 hours of sick leave annually, 
part-time employees will receive sick leave on a prorated basis. Sick leave, oh, by the way, he said that that was very generous. Yes, the LCT has said that yeah. also. Sick leave shall be credited July 1 of each year. At the end of the fiscal year, sick leave that has accrued but has not been used may be carried over to the following fiscal year. The maximum amount of sick leave that may be accrued, accumulated is 240 hours for full-time employees. Accrued and unused sick leave will not be paid out at the time of separation. So that's where the question was because VLCT had, in a previous go around, had indicated in a note that you can't limit the amount of sick leave that somebody can accrue. But then all that time spent with the attorney, he said, well, yeah, it does. You let them accrue forever and ever, and then you might get in a situation where somebody is really sick for a long time and you can't get rid of them because they've got um, sick, a lot of sick leave but and you can't replace them because you've got this person still on. So anyways, what we had decided a month ago was still okay. So that is, and struggling, uh, I just struggled for a long time this afternoon with page numbers and the index and things like that. John Reed said he would help me with that. So we don't really have something that's printable yet, but I would like to have it in place when our new hire starts tomorrow. So that was my idea. To approve it this evening. Yeah. Okay. But I realize you, you haven't had much had, time. I mean, you haven't really had a chance to go over it. Do you feel I haven't, but that? I, I do, only because at any point this can be amended. Yeah. Okay. Right? That's true. So yeah. we can, um, I mean, if it's four years in the making and, mm -hmm. you know, I, I feel comfortable. We all went over it really, really thoroughly. <laughs> really, really yeah. it, yeah. it can be amended at any point if we can have something. That's very true. Michael, what's on page 24 about? I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to get it all on the last page so I can uh, <laughs> So what's the board's plan? It's vacation. I, I have a motion to approve it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll make a motion to approve it. I'll second that. And any further discussion about the personnel policy? <sighs> Please. Well, we shouldn't. <laughs> Amen. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Aye. It's approved. Yeah. Great. When will there be a copy? Um, I was thinking, when is he going to come down and do his paperwork with Brandy? Uh, He'll stop by uh, today. Tomorrow. Because I could, I could just have you make a copy, and we'll just do the page numbers later. I don't think. Yeah. Yeah. It's I'm sure that's not going to be a concern. Yeah. Page numbers, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Before we make a lot of copies, we can make one copy. And this addendum is for the employee to sign saying that they've seen this and that they have yep. agreed to it. Thank you. Did you recreate that or that was the one already on file? This in this page. Because I do have one at the office. This personal uh, personnel account acknowledgement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't oh, okay. I miss it all. Because yeah, I had those at the office. What? I have copies of oh, okay. the office. Right. So the thing that's left to do now is for a personnel policy for the elected officials. The board decided not to include that here, so. And I have a, copy, a paper copy of the older personnel policy where there was stated within the policy the benefits for the um, elected officials. Yeah, but we decided not to do that. This I know, but okay. I have what was once the outline. Yeah, established yeah. for the elected mm -hmm. officials yeah. to work from. There is an addendum. Yeah, I think I, I have it digitally too didn't somewhere. Print, I didn't print it out here, but there is an, an, another addendum that can be made mm -hmm. into that kind of a uh, document that can cover 
the elected officials. Michael, if we could have a paper copy at some point, I feel like that would be helpful. Okay, I had, um, I think I had it in that box that I left at the town office, but then I took it out. It's in my, on my desk, and mm -hmm. um, I will bring it back down to the town office. What yeah. happened? Is that box still there? I thought Chris was going to go through it. No, it's still there. completely forgot about it. It's still there. Oh, okay. Cool. Well, it's stuck in there. Michael, are you holding confidential information? <laughs> <laughs> no, none of this confidential. Uh, I will try to get that down there Talk in the box. Um, okay. I'm sure I have a copy of I that, I forgot the box was there. Thanks for the reminder. Yes. <laughs> so, model rules of procedure. Uh, I didn't really study that too much. Did you? I did. Yeah. I made some circles. Okay. Um. But if you guys haven't, um, do you want to do you have one? No, I don't. Okay. So it looks to me like we get to choose um, just some options. Mm -hmm. We have options, right? All yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. Right. For example, this part that says all business shall be conducted in the same order as it appears on the notice agenda, except that any addition or deletion from the notice, notice agenda must be made as the first act of business at the meeting. No additions or deletions from the agenda shall be considered once the first act of business at the meeting has commenced. <sighs> any other adjustments to the notice agenda, for example, changing the order of business, Postponing or tabling actions may be made by unanimous or majority vote of the body. Which doesn't make any sense. First they're saying you can't do it, and then they say you can. So that's a lawyer for you. <laughs> <laughs> I think that if I understand, like we're we're uh, we can file the rules of small boards, mm -hmm. and which don't require a second if we don't choose to, yeah. and then. But that's our choice. We can yeah. we can do whatever mm -hmm. we want. Mm -hmm. um, okay. You had some suggestions that you wanted. I just, yeah, I went through everywhere where there was an option, and I just circled the option that I liked. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm up, mm -hmm. you know, up mm -hmm. for doing it in a different way too. Motions made by the members of the body do do not require us. I second. feel like a second is kind of redundant, and I always mess it up anyway. So <laughs> if we don't do it, then I won't have an opportunity to mm -hmm. screw it up. Do not require you, which is do not require a second. Yeah. There's no one else. A member may speak or make a motion only after being recognized by the chair or without being recognized by the chair. I feel like we should go with that because. You're not going to get me to stop. No, and it was, <laughs> we're, we're a small enough for it. Yeah, that I think yeah. It doesn't, uh, yeah. 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 And then Liz, Liz suggested motions to close or limit debate will be entertained. Where's that one? Uh, same number six. Okay. So that if you okay. get out of line, you yeah, can stop. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> will be entertained. They might not pass. <laughs> These rules may, and then the last thing, Liz's suggestion, not the last thing, but um, the rules may be amended by a majority of the vote mm -hmm. of the body and must mm -hmm. be adopted. In there. Again, we're a small enough board that yeah. I think that that is yeah. your agreement. Yep. Yeah. And I'll fix something up in this uh, number one about yeah. who can run the meeting. And under agendas, this had that uh, if you wanted to be added to the meeting, you had you need to contact the chair, which I think is mm -hmm. how it's mostly yeah. done, anyways, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, that's great. So, this third item under agendas, mm -hmm. I understand that that we, unless we. Uh, amend the meeting at the beginning of the meeting that we can't. That's what amend. it seems to say, but then it says in the last sentence any other adjustment to the notice example, agenda, changing the order or postponing or tabling actions may be made by unanimous or two thirds or vote of the body. That's why I suggest to just take that one out. It doesn't make any sense. Well, I think it's saying <laughs> that if you're going to switch things around, you have to do it right at the beginning. Yeah. And you can't do it after business has begun. Yeah, but 
Do we really care? Well, I mean, that's the whole <laughs> Any other notice, any other adjustments to the notice agenda, for example, changing the order of business, postponing could maybe made. Well, we did that tonight, though. We do right? We, like, we asked M Michael to be on here. Yeah. And so, and by a majority of the body, mm -hmm. we voted to do that. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's, a, that's something that we should. What do you think about keeping that? The whole thing? Keep the whole thing, and then the three, you know, if the three of us agree to change mm -hmm. the order of the okay. meeting, then we can do that. If I read that okay. right. Did you have any other changes? Uh, I don't think I finished. Oh, yeah. I don't think I finished this book. Regular meetings we already decided on. Special meetings, that's all in the statute. Uh, emergency meetings, that's in the statute. electronic or other means of attending. So this is, uh, am I, this is a confusing one for me because we don't do this at all. Mm -hmm. We haven't so far is on, under public participation. Mm -hmm. um, number two, um, and it's something that has been suggested but it has, doesn't always happen in, mm -hmm. for instance, school board meetings. Um, at the beginning um, or the end of or the conclusion of discussion of each agenda item, but before any action is taken by the by the public body at each meeting, there may be minutes afforded for open public comment. So that would be in addition to public comment? Well, this is their comment. It's not just random. This would be comment on the issue. Whatever we're discussing, right? So you know that's not really like public, like the random public comment at the beginning. Um, and the the select board is always kind of allowed. If there are other people here mm -hmm. that are on the select board ha that have a question or a suggestion about the discussion. Mm -hmm. um, it just becomes mm -hmm. part of the discussion. It doesn't mm -hmm. wait till the end. Mm -hmm. um, that's been my experience mm -hmm. with that. But so like if we were going with this, if you were going to, let me think for a second, if we were to make a motion for something, we don't have to second it anymore, before we voted, would we say, does anyone have a comment, anyone from the public? Right. I mean, I think typically there's mm -hmm. like, it, discussion happens after a motion is made, so mm -hmm. discussion among mm -hmm. board members. So Diana makes a motion, the next thing is for the, the, the presiding officer to say, is there a discussion among board members? Mm -hmm. But this would then say, we have to open it up to the public mm -hmm. to comment, which is fine. I, I mean, it's just not great. Okay, yeah. great. Just like an added step, yeah. but mm -hmm. I think it's good. Mm -hmm. All right, so that would be, I, and my recommendation would, that would be... At the end of the discussion? After discussion? What do you think oh, about yeah. that? Of, yeah. the, of the board, give the board a chance to like get their mm -hmm. feet in there and mm -hmm. ask the questions of each other, yeah. and then mm -hmm. open it up to the public, and that doesn't preclude us from having more discussion about mm -hmm. it. I think that's good, too. Okay. Because hearing what we say may spark so what did somebody you do there, and of, or? And the conclusion of discussion. Okay. Yeah. Order and decorum shall be observed by all persons present at the meeting. Good We're going to have to give you a hand. Look at the planning commission. We need to talk about it too. All right. Yeah. Do you have any other recommendations slash suggestions? Mm -hmm. Again, this is also something we can probably sure, revisit if we're like yeah. unhappy with uh, right. these rules of procedure. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'll take it, I'll mm -hmm. get it downloaded and yeah. fill in the blanks for the over again. Okay. So it'll be an agenda item for next meeting? Yeah. Great. Thank you, Diane. Uh, and the reappraisal status report, is that something that is coming from our we, uh, I think at the last meeting I said that we had only received one proposal. Yep. 
and that proposal was not something that we could work with. So we asked around and got another proposal. That's it. Yeah. Although they can't do it until 2026. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So all those people who buy, who pay a lot of money for their beautiful houses, will continue to be taxed at a low rate. Oh well. What can we do? I mean, there aren't enough appraisers in the state to handle all this business that we have. So I will go over that. We'll get our little uh, reappraisal oversight committee together again. And uh, Barb is coming in tomorrow to talk with Ron. And oh. I'm giving her a copy. I'm sending her a copy of the other um, proposal that we got from NEMREC. Uh, Ed Claude Belter is a guy who lives in Callis. And he's uh, the one that's doing their reappraisals. So. Mm -hmm. So I'll have her just give any advice she, she has. And it's good to at least get on the schedule. So yeah, right. Maybe it'll just keep getting pushed yeah, out. Yeah, I was a little worried. Yeah, I was a little worried. Lives on the whole question. Yeah. So unless uh, there's anything else that we want to do under select board business, um, I'd entertain a motion to enter executive session for, I'm assuming, for personnel. Yes. Um, so moved, and, and we'd like to invite Alpi to stay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. And thank you all. Okay.